Vice President Dr. Constantino Chiwenga announced that plans are in place to capacitate the national railways of Zimbabwe and RZ, which will lead to the resuscitation of discontinued passenger services and lessen the burden on the nation's main thoroughfares. During the height of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, the once popular and reasonably priced intercity passenger rail services were discontinued in an effort to slow the virus's spread. But the business was having trouble before the pandemic struck. Its coaches and engines had long since exceeded their useful lives, and it faced operating obstacles such as outdated equipment, substantial track repairs, and parts where trains were only allowed to travel at 10 km per hour. The firm's bad state has also been attributed to vandalism and theft of vital railway equipment. At its height, the company employed over 21,000 people making it the second largest employer in the nation after the public service. At a gathering in Calvary Park on Sunday, Dr. Chiwenga spoke to hundreds of ZANU-PF supporters, rallying them to support party candidates who will stand in for the Revolutionary Party in this weekend's by-elections. Arthur Majay will represent the party in Calvary Park in the National Assembly elections, while Kidwell Majuru will run in the local government contest. It is one of five constituencies in the city that will hold by-elections. The other three are Bulawayo South, where former Deputy Minister of Industry and Commerce Raj Modi won the party's primary election without facing any opposition. Lobengula Magwe, where Menziwe Dubey will represent Zanupia, and Kita, where Albert Mavunga will represent the party. The final constituency is Mpapomamzilakatsi, where Zingai Kamamba of Zanupf is expected to represent the party. According to Dr. Chiwenga, the government has made a conscious decision to ensure that the passenger train services, which are safer and more affordable, are reinstated, with financial support from the Treasury given to the Ministry of Transport and Infrastructural Development. The Minister of Finance and Economic Development, Professor Mthilin Kyu, announced last Thursday during his 2024 budget presentation that the Ministry of Transport and Infrastructural Development has been given $1. 2 trillion to help with the construction and upkeep of transportation infrastructure, including roads, ports of entry, airports, and the NRZ turnaround. What I'm about to reveal will thrill you. We've made the decision to rehabilitate our railway line connecting Harare with the magnificent city of Bulawayo as soon as we resume passenger service. According to Dr. Chiwenga, the government will provide funding to the Transport Ministry and the NRZ so that they can start working on the railway line rehabilitation project right away and get our trains back on the rails. According to him, when the railway transport system is fully restored, it will reduce traffic on the nation's main thoroughfares and offer a more affordable and secure means of transportation for both passengers and cargo. According to a certain project, our railway system ought to revert to its previous state by the next year. A dependable transport system will be required to handle this bulk freight because a number of industries, including mining and agriculture, have turned the corner. This is where the NRZ steps in, Dr. Chiwenga stated. Our highways will experience less strain and have a longer lifespan. According to NRZ spokesman Mr. Andrew Kunambura, the business was giving caution repairs priority, and the work had resulted in a considerable mileage being traveled. Treasury has made financial resources available for the NRZ's revival. Therefore, the maintenance of cautions, which is proceeding well, is our top concern in this regard. Mr. Kanambura stated that the return of both intercity and intracity city trains is now approaching. A US dollar 81, 2 million agreement between the government and India in 2022 will provide the NRZ with 315 wagons, 9 locomotives, and DMU passenger coaches. Plans are already in place for the NRZ to expand its freight capacity and return to the 18 million tons per year levels attained in the 1990s. The company's current annual volume of only 3 million tons is a far cry from the enormous volumes it handled during its peak. The NRZ's activities have been severely hampered in recent years by a mix of underfunding and infrastructure vandalism, forcing enterprises to turn to pricey road freight services. President Umingagwa granted approval for Mrs. Mali Dingani's appointment to the NRZ board last month.
Mrs. Dingani will take over as deputy chairperson, succeeding General William Dubey, whose term had ended. The NRZ board is chaired by Mr. Mike Nadiro.